Today on Understanding Immigration, DHS's new budget and priorities. Even when given an opportunity to fix the self-inflicted border crisis through DHS's uh, budget for the upcoming fris fiscal year, the Biden administration doubles down. This is all about completely rebranding DHS. ICE is no longer about apprehending criminal aliens. It's no longer about apprehending immigration lawbreakers in general in the country and removing them from the country. CBP is no longer about deterring illegal immigration. Coming to you from Washington, D.C., you are now listening to FAIR's Understanding Immigration Podcast. It's no secret that Biden has diminished nearly every facet of our border security and immigration enforcement apparatus since taking over. Right. It should come as no surprise that DHS, his DHS proposal for fiscal year 2023 is doubling down on his latest antics right. at the border. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jason Pena. I'm one of FAIR's researchers, and today I'm joined by the director of research, Spencer Raley. Spencer, let's take this over to you. Is there anything in President Biden's DHS proposal that even comes close to putting an end to the border crisis? No, there's not. I mean, what we're seeing in fiscal 2023, the plan going forward by the Biden administration is not to even acknowledge any of the damage that's been done so far. They're doubling down. What they're essentially trying to do and what they're showing in this proposal is that they're going to completely rebrand DHS. It is no longer a law enforcement agency. It is essentially, as as we've said many times here at FAIR, it's a welcoming committee. Right. You know, we're seeing so much we're seeing millions and billions of dollars here being put into processes to expedite illegal aliens and other migrants into the country faster, not to identify them, process them, and remove them if they've broken our laws. You know, one thing we're seeing here is more than $750 million being put into efforts to reduce the immigration backlog in our court system, which on the surface sounds great. You know, that's a major issue. It needs to be addressed. It needs to be, you know, that backlog needs to be reduced. But what we're seeing is not, you know, efforts to conclude these cases quicker, see if individuals are supposed to be in the United States or supposed to be removed. It's more just like, hey, we're going to cancel cases. We're going to let people just come into the country. You know, one of the things we're seeing the Biden administration entertain that I think is uh, very concerning and, quite frankly, illegal is allowing asylum officers to essentially rule on whether or not someone receives asylum instead of that having to go through the proper process of going before a judge who determines whether or not they have a valid case. Right. And if that, you know, if that happens, sure, you're going to have fewer people going before an immigration judge which is going to make the backlog shrink a little bit, but you're also just going to have all these asylum cases just rubber stamped and these individuals being just ushered into the country as fast as possible. Uh, so, I mean, really what, what you're seeing here is you know, no money for additional border security. Of course, there's this kind of uh, new narrative they're having about we're going to put a technological wall at the border. Which they're <laughs> right. not even calling it that anymore. They're just saying we're going to have more cameras, we're going to have more drones, etc., but again, that's not going to be to deter illegal immigration. That's not going to be to find where people are entering the country, then secure those areas or to apprehend those individuals and send them home. It's more so we can say, oh, here's where everyone's coming across. Let's go get them, process them, and release <laughs> right. them into the country. And I would like to say that that will help reduce crime, you know, catch criminals, return them back to wherever they came from. But what we just saw from the ICE Fiscal 21 report where tens of thousands of criminal illegal aliens are being released into the country, the same being true with those being apprehended at the southern border, it's quite likely we're going to catch those drug dealers, individuals with previous convictions, and they're just going to be processed and released into the country as well. No, you're absolutely right about that, Spencer. You know, even one of the better facets of this DHS proposal even falls short. For example, so one of the initiatives that they want to fund is hiring an additional 300 Border Patrol agents along the, the southwest border, which right. it sounds great on paper. However, based on what we've seen this past year and change, it doesn't even come that number. Those 300 agents won't be enough to handle what's going on. I mean, if you remember last since last year, they had to the then uh, acting CBP commissioner Troy Miller. He had to pull 
border agents from the coastal and northern borders. So he had to take them from their from their important assignments in their respective sectors down to help out on the a southern border. And even then, that was temporary. So even then, while we're happy to have more border agents on the front lines, it's still not enough. It, and also, it's something to think about. As you said, we border DHS and Border Patrol have essentially become a catering ag- agencies. They're, they're essentially welcoming illegal aliens into the country, taking uh, just taking the information that they're provided by uh, foreign nationals and hoping that it's correct, and then streamlining right. them in, into the United States. Also, I, I noticed in the budget proposal there was no mention of hiring additional ICE agents. Now, I'm honestly not surprised at, at this right. point because. <laughs> Uh, the DHS secretary, Alejandro Mayorkas, he has taken a – he's essentially gutted immigration enforcement. So even even the current agents that many of them have been reassigned to the border, you would think that there would be an initiative to hire more ICE agents to at least supplement whatever agents are out, out towards the border. This, this entire budget is a complete joke. It, it doesn't come close – to solving the issues that are currently occurring on the southern border, nor in the interior enforcement. I mean, there's nothing that I saw that would say like, hey, let's charter more flights to repatriate more criminal aliens mm-hmm. back to their countries of origin. Nothing of the sort. If anything, we saw, we, we, we see evidence that they try to cut back on detention space for illegal aliens into right. the country. So t- t- touching on those points, Spencer, we're... Where will these taxpayers' uh, taxpayer dollars be allocated instead? It, it's not going to more ICE agents. No. It's not going to hire more border patrol agents, which we desperately need. Mm-hmm. It's not going to, ha- to. It's not going to more detention space. Where's it all going? Well, l- like I had mentioned a little bit ago, this is all about completely rebranding DHS. ICE <laughs> is no longer about apprehending criminal aliens. It's no longer about apprehending immigration lawbreakers in general in the country and removing them from the country. CBP is no longer about deterring illegal immigration. All the Biden administration wants is for the pictures of you know kids in cages. This whole mm-hmm. you know slogan, which is largely incorrect, to go away. They don't want those headlines, but they want to have their cake and eat it too. <laughs> you could say they don't want to do that by deterring illegal uh, immigration into the country. They're hoping to do that by speeding up the process. In other words, make the process so quick that there's no opportunity for someone who entered this country illegally to be behind bars. You enter the country illegally, who cares? Here's some paperwork, here's a flight funded by taxpayer dollars into somewhere in the country wherever we want you to go. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's what you're starting to, that's what you're seeing with some of these uh, some of these line items in the budget as well. For example, you know, they're, some of the new hires to CBP, they're not even wanting to call border agents now. They're calling them, I believe it was uh, pr- uh, processing, processing coordinators, coordinators uh, which is at this point not even trying to pretend that they want to enforce law. They're basically outright admitting we have no intention of removing those that violate our immigration laws. We have no intention of deterring illegal immigration. Our main goal is to bring as many people into the country as possible. So, of course, you're seeing that. You're seeing a renewed focus uh, on refugee resettlement. And, you know, that's that's to, you know, somewhat of a valid point, of course, with what's going on in Ukraine right now and the United States' desire to try to help that situation mm-hmm. as much as we can. But I don't think we should be fooled in that respect either because the Biden administration fully intended to drastically increase the refugee cap well before these conflicts, you know, were, you know, even on anybody's radar. So this is more like, you know, kind of a shift of what they were planning to do, which would bring, be to bring more individuals in from the Middle East and to allow more people from Central and South America to fraudulently claim asylum and refugee status and come into the country that way. Um and of course, there's a lot of money in these um, in these uh, um, in this budget that is essentially being required to go towards USCIS and trying to expedite the process for a lot of for these hundreds of thousands of individuals that are going to end up being resettled in the United States because of our failed withdrawal <laughs> from the Afghanistan uh, conflict last year. So some of it's playing catch up. And some of it is just this further transformation of these agencies into something that appeases the left, which is essentially to just flood the country with as many migrants as possible 
not caring who they are, not caring what, you know, skills and values they bring to this country, not even caring what their criminal record might be. It's just a matter of, you know, bringing as many people into the country as possible. And we're already seeing the, you know, we're already seeing the uh, negative impacts of that, whether it's, you know, in, you know, the economy, uh, just more and more reports of crimes being committed by illegal aliens mm -hmm. inside the country. And I don't know why anyone is acting surprised by that. I mean, what else did you expect, quite honestly? And so the American people should just expect this to become worse, to become more and more of a problem. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right, Spencer. I, you know, it's interesting. President Biden literally hired the right person for the job, Alejandro Mayorkas. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when you the right person being the wrong person, <laughs> yeah, no, the, no, qu quite literally, he my my Orcas has essentially taken a wrecking ball to every facet mm -hmm. of like. Even when it comes to criminal aliens or national security threats, I mean, Mayorkas has, has even shown minimal interest even in that. I mean, that's mm -hmm. I mean, even during the Obama years, we had we at least with that administration, they prioritize serious, dangerous criminals. Mm -hmm. uh, people who had ties to extremist groups. Parsing through a little bit more of this, I've noticed that there's no mention of uh, trying to fund um, Remain in Mexico, or the Migrant mm -hmm. Protection Protocols. I mean, if you remember, there was a federal court order had, had instructed the Biden administration to follow through with that, but even they're, they're doing the bare minimum. Makes sense why they wouldn't want any more money to uh, funnel to MPP. Um, one thing that I that I do want to bring up that's not related to the budget proposal is Title Forty Two. Now, right, this is something that we we've been monitoring pretty closely here at Fair. Mm -hmm. uh, for our audience who's unfamiliar with Title Forty Two, it is essentially a a <coughs> protocol from the from the CDC allowing border authorities to repatriate migrants back to their home country if they are believed to be carrying uh, COVID nineteen mm -hmm. or other communicable diseases. Uh, before they enter the United States, there's been a lot of talks that the administration is contemplating ending this pretty soon, actually, um, as soon as April, which is actually mm -hmm. just a few days away. I want to touch on that saying that this is one of the last, if not the last mechanism that is holding everything together barely at our border. I mean, this when we look at last month's uh, or as they say, encounters now, since they're changing the language. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> when we look at last month's apprehensions, more than 50% of, en of encountered aliens were uh, were repatriated thanks to Title 42. Mm -hmm. Spencer, I can only imagine how that's going to turn out once they revoke Title 42. Well, honestly, if you look at this budget that's being passed, part of this whole process is preparing for... Yeah, essentially the indiv number of individuals being brought into the country, not just encountered, but brought into the country to at least double. Because like you mentioned, most of these individuals are being removed via Title 42, and the administration has no intention of removing individuals via other lawful means. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, COVID-19 is still a very real threat. So I think it's too early to even discuss removing Title 42 if you're wanting to look at this from a reasonable perspective, which the administration does not. Um but ideally, in normal circumstances, you wouldn't need to be exercising Title 42 authority because you are following the law in other ways. One, you're deterring illegal immigration, whether that's from a physical border wall, things like E-Verify being mandatory, just really taking away the magnets that bring illegal, that draws illegal immigra immigrants into this country. Uh, and then, of course, removing those lawbreakers that do violate our immigration laws. Neither of those thing, two things seem to be on the table going forward. And so what you're seeing is just this, this whole new process of we're upping funding essentially for DHS so that we can bring you know, these additional people into the country faster. And I think if you even just look at the language of some of these points, it points to that. For example, one of their, one of their headers was they want to ensure a fair and efficient immigration <laughs> system, which, again, on the surface – we would say a fair and efficient immigration system is one that prioritizes merit over necessarily just family ties, one that uh, you know prioritizes individuals that actually have valid claims of asylum or refugee status instead of allowing individuals to use loopholes and to you know rubber stamp fraudulent claims and mm -hmm. you know things like that. But if you look at what the Biden administration says, in a fair and efficient system is one that approves absolutely as many people as possible, uh, which is alarming. 
The same is true when you see, like, supports America's promise to refugees, which is essentially, in Biden's terms, bring as many people in as possible. Don't vet them. Don't ensure that those that are coming here actually need to come here and aren't trying to game the system. Uh, another header was to improve border processing and management, which, again, sounds great to any you know law-abiding individual mm-hmm. that cares about the rule of law because you would think that means more border agents, more enforcement of our laws at the Southern War. But no, if you look at what you're seeing is, you know, just, again, all of these, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars, for example, $494 million for, quote, non-citizen processing and care costs. <sighs> again, that's just code. If you dig into the specifics, that's code for how quickly can we release these individuals into the country. And again, finally, they have the comment here about improving immigration courts. And again, this is more than a billion dollars, nearly a billion and a half. Jeez. And again, what this covers is... Uh, just if you look at the line by line, allowing individuals into the country faster, they talk about, you know, choosing the right cases, which again comes down to, yes, you came to the you know country illegally, but you don't fit our guidelines for removal. Therefore, we're just going to dismiss your case. And of course, if you've been following the news and everything that Mayorkas has been doing in regards to deportation and apprehension guidelines for ICE, it protects essentially everyone, including mm-hmm. hardened felons. <laughs> right. You know, under the newest guidelines, many hardened felons cannot be apprehended and removed by ICE. So they get a pass. That's that's what you're seeing with this is a preparation for the complete dismantling of our immigration system. We will, if we continue down this path, and I'm not talking 10, 20, 30 years from now, I'm talking a year or two down the road, we will be at a point where there is essentially no immigration law in this country. If you can get here, you can stay here. We're almost there now. You know, we've already seen under Biden uh, deportations go down to almost record low numbers. You know, Mm -hmm. if you cut out the first few months that Trump was president, there were only about 28,000 deportations over the rest of fiscal year 21 under Biden. Again, that's despite, you know, rough almost 2 million encounters at the southern and northern border. So, I mean, you just do the math. And you subtract that 28,000 from the 2 million, mm-hmm. and then you count in everyone that has made it into the country without detection. You're talking about massive growth of the illegal immigration population. You're also seeing huge numbers of individuals coming in, you know, via lawful means. You know, we're seeing those expanded dramatically. So, I mean, it's really just a uh, – we've gone from – This whole concept from early in the Biden administration, which was kind of the orange man bad philosophy, as I call it, uh, which was if Trump did it, we're going to do the opposite. Now to taking the next step, which is not only is just, you know, not only is just more immigration better than less immigration. It's this idea that we need to literally bring in as many people as possible, not just bring in as many people as possible. We need to start reallocating resources so we can bring in even more people than we're capable of bringing in right now. And the impact on the American people is just going to be catastrophic. Even when given an opportunity to fix the self-inflicted border crisis through DHS's uh, budget for the upcoming fiscal year, the Biden (laughs) administration doubles down on bringing in as many uh, migrants as possible it's this should truly concern every american and legal immigrant who cares about the rule of law having a secure border and making sure that our mm-hmm. enforcement uh mechanisms are, are functioning properly let's hope the administration has a change of heart and decides to rescind on their initial budget proposal and, and set forth one that actually has the uh the american people in mind going mm-hmm. forward Well, that's a great point to end on today. For those of you listening, we hope you enjoyed today's podcast. We encourage you to share the podcast with your friends and family, and we hope that you leave us a review and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. To learn more about FAIR, please visit our website at fairus.org. We're also available on Facebook and Twitter at FAIR Immigration. This has been Understanding Immigration, brought to you by FAIR. FAIR.